Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from me, Beast of My Name. And today in this video, I want to talk about one of the most important topics when it comes to war, micromanagement. A lot of people have asked me how I get such good product trades even when my margins are way too low or if my enemy is stronger than me. One key point to that is how you manage your margins in the different situations you are in. The three big pillars are attack, open field, and defense. In every situation, you need to adapt your playstyle and change it a bit. Not for talent trees, not to heroes, mainly only your playstyle is enough and how you manage your margins in this situation. As you can see on this picture, I'm going to talk about every troop type and how to use whose marches in this specific situation. Today in this video, we're going to start with, with the infantry unit type, going over the calf, followed by the archer van, and ending with part 4 with the mages. So let's start into the video and let me show you how you can micromanage as best as possible the infantry. So let's start with a good old infantry. As we all know and see from their stats, are the infantry forming the front line and taking a lot of damage. They're not doing by themselves a lot of damage, so they are without a damage marches, mostly useless and free meat for damage marches. But they are not completely useless. Let's start with the attack. If you are on the attack side, you have here three main micromanagement playstyles. What you can do. The first one is that you use your infantry march as a shield or meatball, which is forming the front line and the spear of the attack. Here you're not just running into the enemy marches that would just kill your march. Best would be if you deceive the enemy by letting them think you charge in while you're actually retreating in the next second to force their marches to follow you if they have decided to attack your infantry march. That gives your damage marches for opportunity to attack their damage marches if they're coming into the range and you can do that all the time until you cannot do that anymore because either you hitting each other or you are forced to either block infantry or cavalry marches. The second play style you can adapt to the attack is that you are in the lines or behind the range marches. Here are two things what can happen. The first thing is the enemy is stupid enough and then their calf or infantry marches only range marches, which gives you then the opportunity to easily block them and your range marches can easily swarm whose marches went down. The second thing what can happen is that the enemy is actually seeing what you're trying to do or is not stupid enough to send their calf and infantry marches just lonely into your range marches and it's gonna end up in a range better first. Important here is then that you're not losing the view from the calf marches mainly of course also the infantry marches since in whose attacks you could get potential get flanked. The third playstyle is uh, like a I call it claw positioning. What I mean with that is that your inf marches are on the side of the range marches and they're trying to flank the enemy marches. Here are two things what can happen. The first thing is the enemy reacts and repositioning. The second thing is by focusing the imp and blocking with their own imp while the range of them shoots only imp marches. If that situation actually gonna happen, then this gives you the opportunity to free hit on their range marches. Because if you think about this, your infantry marches coming from the left or right side and whose marches from the enemy focusing the left or right side infantry marches. While your range marches are in the mid of whose infantry marches. So that means you can basically then free hit the enemy range marches. Important here is of course also to have a look on the, uh, on the calf marches and um, that you're not getting attacked by them and that you always have a couple of infantry marches at least behind your range marches to potentially block the enemy calf marches. What you can also of course do is that you merge whose playstyles. That for example 
you're using the first place done, but you're gonna have a line of in 20 marches using it as a spear for uh, and, and meat shield. And that you also have some other infantry marches behind your range marches to potentially block then the calf marches. Let's come to the open field situation. The open field situation is a little bit special. Here it depends on the current situation you are in and you need to adapt. Is there only poking? Are you trying to push, but you can? Is the enemy marches having calf marches out? In the open field where no one is pushing or can pushing, the inf is in most of its situation useless and should be safe for Aether if you do attack or if you need to defend by your own. Of course, you can try here again to kind of deceive the enemy and kind of, yeah, focus their range matches on your inf matches. But here again, if it mostly just open field fighting, no one is really pushing and it comes down to who running out on troops first or who running out of active people first. I would say either save your infantry marches or let them at least behind your range marches to block potential flanks or attacks from calf marches. Now that we have started talking about defending, let me tell you what I would do when it comes to micromanagement in the defense if I have an infantry march. In my opinion, there are mainly two play styles. The first one is you're letting the imp behind your range marches and looking for potential calf attacks or flanks. The second play style is if you think you can destroy the push from the enemy, you can block their imp or calf marches by directly attack them, but so that their marches are getting attacked first. What I mean with that, that you're letting the enemy come to you. Best for tier, of course, also if you're using the terrain or if you're using, for example, barricades as an extra to let them come to you and to slow them down, which is going to end up that they're going to get more damage because their marches are slower and not reaching your marches that fast. For the first playstyle, it's important to know that you want to try to poke, go back, poke, go back on the infantry or calf marches. If you are just vending them on your marches. This way you can already kill a lot of their front line and since your infantry marches are behind and didn't got attacked, you have the option to make a counter attack if your team feeling like it. Here is it really really important that you maybe have thought already in my streams that you really, if you are on the defense and they doing a push and you have the option, for example because of barricades, to attack the cap and infantry marches for free then do it. If you see that, okay, you're having the potential to getting attacked by the range marches of the enemy, go a little bit back, attack again the infantry range marches. At some point, they either are gonna force them out to save them, or they just letting them fall into your marches and they are basically free kills for you. As you can see in the defense position, you mostly react to what the enemy is doing. So it's important to know if you are on the defense defensive side, what type of push is that, how can you micro your inf march the best, where you need to be with your inf march to hold the push and make a potential counter attack. So this was it with the first part of our overall micromanagement guide. I hope you have enjoyed these tips around the infantry march and um, I hope that whose tips and whose play styles are gonna help you out to have a better use of the infantry marches in the wars. I hope it's gonna help you getting more wins um, or overall a better feeling in the war. Um, the next video is gonna be about the calf marches. We are gonna uh, talk about when, like I did today, about the attack, when the open feet and the defense. So yeah, that was it for the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what you think about the micromanagement, uh, micromanagement guide. Did I miss anything? Did you like it? Did you not like it? If so, smash the dislike or the like button. Depends on your feeling. And don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss out the other three parts of a big micromanagement guide. This was it 
from uh, from my side. Stay healthy, everyone, and we're gonna see us on the next one.